be very clear about how you're explaining how you've um, used these leadership principles in your experience. That Thank I- you so much, Joshua, for joining today. Really appreciate your time. Uh, would you please tell me a little bit about yourself? Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, thanks, Young. And nice to see you again uh, after a while. Um, so, yeah, about myself, uh, I'm originally from uh, India, a uh, town called Udupi in the southwest coast of India. Um, I started off as a mechanical engineer there, worked in Bangalore. If you've heard of the city, that's where a lot of um, the software industry is. Well, actually, I did one year in a refinery because I was a mechanical engineer. I tried it out, was not to my taste. So I went to Bangalore to work for a pretty small company at that point called Capillary Technologies. Um, and I I was an account manager where we handled mostly retail accounts where my company sold um, loyalty programs. We ran loyalty programs for our customers. And part of this was... Um, because we collected a lot of data, uh, analytics was also served as a service to customers who found value in it. And in the course of that, I um, found myself being interested in analytics, uh, being an account manager who was usually presenting the work of others from the company. I found myself thinking I could do this myself. Um, So I decided to change careers and also uh, decided to come to the US uh, uh, to do my grad school in uh, North Carolina State University, next door to where you went, uh, and uh, did my master's in operations research. So um, it was a really nice program at NC State University because it gave us a lot of freedom to choose the subjects as we saw fit. As long as they were quantitative in nature, um, we had to take the uh, usual optimization courses that operations research requires. But very nice program where I personally wanted to get into data science and analytics, and I took courses tailored to that. Um, And uh, fortunately, I worked, I got a job at uh, Red Hat, right, literally right next door, I think, to NC State in Raleigh, where we met for the first time Mm -hmm. when we were interns. Um, I went on to continue as an in from an intern position to a full time job there. Um, Worked for three years uh, doing sales analytics. Uh, It was a great experience. And then uh, decided to try something new um, and move to Amazon. And I've been at Amazon ever since, I think uh, just over one and a half years now. So you, you said you joined Amazon after being at Red Hat for a little bit. What was your first reaction when you first got that job offer from Amazon? Like, how did you feel? What were you doing? Were you happy? Were you, you know, how did you celebrate and stuff? Oh, yeah. I, I think, trying to remember my, I think I got a call from the recruiter uh, because I was looking for jobs for a while and some some interviews didn't go well and some went well um, so I was I was on the fence of whether I, whether I would get the job but when the recruiter called I was honestly shocked um, I did I did celebrate in Raleigh went to <laughs> I think one of our uh, favorite restaurants there <laughs> got my favorite bottle of whiskey and celebrated um, yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, fun times. Yeah, fun times. Yeah. Um, let's jump into more on how you got into Amazon. So you mentioned something about, you know, been working at Red Hat and then kind of looking for other jobs. Like, what was your process? Like, did you have a referral or someone reach out to you or like, how did that happen? Um, so, uh I applied to quite a few uh, jobs at Amazon and I made sure I got referrals for most of them uh, because fortunately I had some friends who worked here. Now, I I guess referrals worked in that case. You can never tell, right? Uh, But it it was definitely a case of me applying to a job for which the recruiter got back, if that was the question. Um, And one of these jobs which um, progressed um i the first uh, interview i think was um re- the recruiter called me and then scheduled a tech screen which was with the hiring manager so it was uh, for a bi role it, it was a sql uh, tech screen where we, we had to screen share and basically answer a few questions that the hiring manager asked um i think i did well in that and uh, directly it was the five interview loop 
uh, it's the on virtual on site as we call it these days that loop um i was lucky because because it was a virtual on site i was offered uh, the choice of doing it in one day or two days i obviously took two days because <laughs> one day would be overwhelming um final loop was i think the well known amazon final loop where uh amazonians in different roles uh, i think in my case from different sister teams as well interviewed me there were it was a mix of actual bis bi managers product managers and even a sd um who who i think was the bar raiser uh, because that's a feature of amazon's interviewing of course uh, method um uh, it was over two days a mix always about uh, leadership principles amazon's leadership principles back when i joined we had 14 now we have 16 um and in cases where the technical interviewers were involved the leadership principles were a natural segue into the technical aspects of the projects which i was explaining um as part of my answers for the leadership principle questions how how did you prepare for those interviews like oh yeah so to put it in a nutshell it was leadership principles cross tab with the star method which we are always uh, advised to do uh when i say uh, cross tab it was literally an excel sheet where i had all the leadership principles listed out <laughs> and the star as columns and i wrote them as many as possible i had uh, i tried to have different examples multiple exams for e- 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 each uh, leadership principle i was lucky because i had some experience by that time so i could recount quite a few stories wrote them down went through them a few times i think over a week i did redrafts of it looked through the details made sure they were correct and tried to be quantitative wherever possible right that's that's the important yeah. where i'm saying if i'm talking about a significant increase in sales that i uh, helped uh, uh-huh. happen that significant needs to be replaced with a number wherever possible um obviously it's a little hard to talk about things that happened 5 years ago in some cases but i tried to make sure they were as quantitative in nature as possible writing them down for me was the most important thing because i am very visual in nature reading them knowing where they were the details helped me really answer the questions quickly and accurately <laughs> got it yeah no that's exactly what i did as well you work as a business intelligence engineer um at amazon can you tell me a little bit about what you do as a bie yeah sure uh, so first thing is i uh, the role of a bie uh, at amazon will vary with the org and team in which you are working um and amazon being as vast as it is the variation is quite significant i can only talk about what i do in my team which is um alexa growth um so the alexa org within the device the, the larger devices org um what my team does is we try to increase the engagement of alexa's customers mostly through <laughs> our devices but um it alexa is not restricted to just our devices uh, um you can for example you can see alexa on the um what we call the m shop app the amazon.com mobile app um so that's our goal um it starts boiling down into metrics obviously which we want to measure ourselves against starts with the standard of active days which is our what we call our north star goal um and a host of other associated metrics by which we want to measure engagement right mm-hmm. now where i come in here is naturally there's a lot of numbers involved we try to increase our customers engagement right we how we do this is we pick certain features for example that we think a customer cohort might find appealing and we do an experiment by an experiment we mean an ab test where we take that customer cohort that we think is inter- might be interested in this expose um uh, that feature um well mm-hmm. exposing that feature can have different ways of doing it i won't get into that for example if we send out a push notification to that cohort we split it into 50 50 send the push notification to 50% of the customers don't send it to the other uh, 
after the after yeah. an observation period we see what the lift is now that cohort trying to guess what cohort might be interested in this product uh, in this product feature is where I come in uh, as a BIE. So I think you can tell already that it's a lot of product analytics that I do here where I see, okay, here's my customer base who has X devices, who has engaged with Y frequency in the last month, let's say. And I think they might be more of a correct segment for this feature. So that's the opportunity sizing part of it. Um, so we we want to make sure we have sufficient impact uh, for our experiments. Um, so I do that. And then the fun part in my team, uh, well, the previous part is fun as well, but uh, another fun part in my team is all of us do the experiments ourselves. So it's not like I do the do the data exploration, hand off the cohort to someone else. I can actually to use our internal tools to set up that experiment, in this case, to set up the push notification, actually design the content, you know, the push notification title and body, um, myself, obviously we will confer as a team and decide what goes out finally, but I get to design and execute the experiment as much as possible within my skill set. Uh, uh -huh. Say within my skill set, there are some, some experiments which need engineering uh, help to actually execute. In that case, they help us out, which is great because our team has a uh, group yeah. of uh, SDEs as well. Yeah. Um, and after the execution, again, my uh, role as a data uh, person comes into play again, where we analyze the, the result of the experiment. Um, we have a lot of internal tools that help us evaluate these experiments in a pretty efficient way. But often there are questions, there are double clicks into the results, which we want to do. Uh, let's say an experiment didn't work right? We want to see what didn't work in the experiment. Uh, let's say if we tried out cohort A and then after the experiment, we decide that maybe cohort A wasn't optimal. Maybe there's a subset of that uh, cohort. Maybe there's a tweak that we can make to that cohort for another round of the experiment to see if that will work better. That's where I come in, where I do you know further slices in the results to see if there's a hint of any positive got it yeah so that's i think that's got what it. i do for the most part got it okay yeah no that makes total sense um so you've been with amazon for about like two years ish now one and a half one and a half years yeah um i mean when you first joined like i know you kind of worked in a similar field when you were back in red hat as well but like was there any learning curve when you joined amazon and if yes like, how were you able to basically overcome those? Yeah, I worked um, I worked in a similar role, but the subject matter was quite different, actually, because there it was B2B sales that I analyzed. And here um, in Alexa, it's literally hundreds of millions of customers and their interactions with our various devices, with Alexa daily. Um, and also other products, because that's part of how we do opportunity sizing for my experiments. Anyway, um, there is there was a difference in the subject matter too. And obviously the scale, like hundreds of millions of customers. And previously it was a quarterly business of B2B sales. So there was a learning curve. It's a new business that I'm dealing with, right? The, the, the metrics that we use to measure the business, the different device names, the different device code names, uh, the different ways in which our tables themselves are structured as a like a data person if i were to mm -hmm. look at the transaction tables the standard way of thinking uh, of a database is transaction tables tables with dimensions it's very different in the case of um, a direct to customer business of this scale so there was a learning curve there which was obviously expected and which was easy to overcome because of the vast amount of documentation that is there at Amazon. If, if you learn, if you know where to look and if you have the willingness to look, there's data on everything at Amazon. There's information on everything and a really helpful team that um, helped me through that uh, transition. Got it. Got uh, it. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. Yeah. So, so another thing, of course, that is different is Amazon's doc, docs, yeah. cult, the culture of uh, reading and writing docs. Um, which I frankly enjoy. Uh, 
it really forces you to think um especially when you're writing when you're presenting something it's it's often in the form of a doc and not a presentation a powerpoint uh really makes you think about the subject matter you're presenting and in my case the numbers that i'm presenting and how they fit into the story that we are trying to tell um that was different but again not a bad learning yeah. curve to go through <laughs> yeah yeah no it totally makes sense um so what are some of the things that you like the most um and what are some of the things that you don't maybe like the maybe some of the things that you like beast uh working uh on on your role um so what i like the most is the scale of data it's just it's amazing when i say we do an experiment of a small subset of the entire customer base i'm talking about hundreds of thousands of customers that i get to do an ab test on which is which is really it's just fun as a, a person interested in data science and analytics uh, that's that's great and what i the other thing i enjoy is my teammates um, we're a small scrappy team we try out a lot of things so, some of them work hopefully most of them work but the like i said all of us do our experiments ourselves so uh, that's i think a feature of how our team works and everyone is supported give to everyone else when they're doing their experiments like i might try to do an experiment today using tools which i have no idea about of how to use i might get into that and next week i can go back to someone who knows about that tool and say hey i'm stuck can you help me out they'll help me out and we'll push the experiment through um that's what i enjoy what i like the least tough question to ask young about for a yeah no i mean if you don't a, if if you don't want to answer it's totally fine no uh well i will flip it around using the standard cliche technique of saying what you don't like which is what i like the least is a function of what i like <laughs> um scale of data right um uh, no but seriously the scale of data that is involved here um i like i said i analyze customer engagement with alexa in terms of how that data is housed that's easily available to me because i'm within the org uh-huh. but often we want to combine that with data from other orgs or uh, with uh, customers mm. the data about customers interactions on other products like mm. entirely disconnected orgs yeah. and the thing is you want to do that because that tells that gives you a holistic picture of the customer and what they like what they don't like um so you have to get that information and that um if you've worked on data or if you've interacted with people who work on data can be a process you have Got to get, uh, access to it you have to make sure you understand the new data set for good reason a lot of the data that we that an individual might want to look at is something they should not look at yeah. for the reasons of customer privacy yeah some other data we will have to provide certain guarantees to the owners of the data saying we will not use it in a way that violates our policy um all in all there is a process to get a hold of the data and then understand it ourselves and see how it works with our data to answer our problem statement and that can be a process it's obviously the pro- part that i like the least but also it's because of the scale of yeah. data at amazon yeah and it's something i know is necessary to make yeah. my work better so totally, yeah totally understand about that um, one yeah yeah no plus one to that yeah. um so my last question already advice for those who want to join amazon as a bie um so the first part i think applies to anyone who wants to join amazon period is um during the interview process of course um when you're answering the leadership principles they are looking to see how you applied your these leadership principles in your prior work right so focus on that they want to see if you've done meaningful work and they will definitely over the course of a 45 minute interview the five interviews that i had each were 45 minutes they will go deep into every answer that you give you can be sure of that so be very clear about how you're explaining how you've um use these leadership principles in your experience that applies to uh, everyone i think and then uh the next parts apply to i think bis uh, specifically 
Um, you need to be good at SQL. I mean, um, I uh, good is you know it's like hard <laughs> to hard to define how good. I um, I don't want to you know set a upper threshold of you know this much is enough because it can vary with the team and their requirements, but um, you need to be able to use SQL to wrangle messy real world data and understand that most often with Amazon, the data is going to be massive. So you will have to write efficient SQL code. Uh, as a BI, it doesn't need to be efficient to the point of what a data engineer uh, ring role might require. It doesn't need to be perfectly optimized code. But what you will find is that when you come in, if you write, like if you do a select star from table, you will just not get the, you will just not get a result. It's going to be that bigger table. That's a very simplistic example, but it's required for the job that you write decently optimized SQL code. And um, for an experienced BI, which I got hired as an L5 BI, uh, you it, it will really help you if you know some, um, some programming language. In my case, it was Python. Uh, Python, R, frankly, um, it really doesn't matter. I mean, if you know C, no one's going to hold hold it against you that you don't know Python. I mean, you know C, right? But you need, it, I wouldn't say you need, but it's good if you know a programming language it. It really help you out. Um, and um, some ba the basics of statistics, because uh, at the end of the day, you will have to report on data at scale and you will have uh -huh. to draw inferences from it. In my case, it's A-B testing. Um, not super complicated, but you need to have your fundamentals in stats. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I heard those um, before. So I'm assuming that those are really important for not only for, you know, BIE, but just for overall Amazon um, as a whole. Awesome. Hey, Joshua, that was all for today. Thank you so much for your time and the insights. Really appreciate it. Yep. Uh, thank you for doing this. Uh, hope to meet you soon, preferably in person sometime. Yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.